Um, so we're going to do cutting today. Um, what is cutting, you may ask? Um, in hole, it's moving to get free of your defender. Um, so that means either going, um, changing directions lots to get free, um, or like you see people doing football, they like slow down and speed up to get free of like a person near them. Um, or in rugby, lots of changing directions. Basically, it's the same in frisbee. It's just lots of movement to try, try and get free of the person who is meant to be staying close to you. So that's kind of what it is. Um, and then we're just going to watch uh, a video which is taken from the Rise Up um, Ultimate YouTube channel um, a little bit. And they talk about cutting technique and three different types of cut. Um, Today we're going to talk about downfield cutting. The easiest way to score goals in Ultimate is to chew up huge chunks of yards with our downfield cutters, getting separation from their defenders, and catching nice easy passes. Now some people think that downfield cutting is all about speed, but remember, there's a defender out there and our techniques that we use with regard to how we get away from that defender are going to be just as important as our physical attributes, how we change direction, and how fast we are. Our goal as a cutter is to create separation from our defender. And that has to do with beating our defender's hips. We want our defender to turn their hips one way so that we can go the other way. The reason you want to beat their hips is because their hips tell you what direction they're able to run. There are lots of different ways to describe cuts or different names for cuts. But we can summarize them in three ways. Commitment cuts, shoulder cuts, and smart cuts. Commitment cuts are probably the most commonly taught style of cutting. You drive one direction and cut in another direction in the shape of a V. We call it a commitment cut because we're committing in our heads that that's the cut we're going to do and we're going to execute it to see if it works. We also call it a commitment cut because our goal is to get our defender to commit their hips one direction, then we change direction and go the other way. While commitment cutting is all about executing a plan from start to finish, shoulder cutting is a much more dynamic style of cutting where you're making decisions on the fly based on what your defender does and how they react. The most likely thing to happen when you start sprinting at someone's shoulders is they are going to change their body position and shift their hips one way or the other. And that's the moment that you make your decision. If they turn their hips one way, you go the other way. They've committed their hips to be only be able to travel in one direction and you want to go in the other direction. Smart cutting is our most dynamic of our three styles of cutting. It puts it all together. One type of smart cut is just taking advantage of your defense's poor positioning. If they're backing you and giving you lots of space underneath, you don't need to drive at them. Just cut underneath and take the free yards. The same can be true if they're playing you too far underneath. Just sprint deep. If you have throwers on your team with those throws, they'll hit you. Uh, cool, so that was a quick recap uh, or going over of lots of different uh, types of cuts. So there are three main cuts that were kind of identified there. Uh, a commitment cut, so um, making like a V when you cut, so you go um, deep, so towards the end zone you're trying to score in, and then you turn uh, at 45 degrees and come under, so towards the disc. Um, and that is kind of a nice V cut and normally with these cuts beforehand you'll be like oh, okay I'm gonna do this cut I'm gonna go deep and then I'm gonna come under um, and that's our first type of cut commitment cut the shoulder cuts like they said um, are kind of based on how your defender reacts so you're kind of cutting into them and then away from them in a different direction um, to try and get free um, and then the smart cut is kind of the rest of the cuts um, and the main thing about that one is just taking advantage of your defense so if the defense is doing something badly or they're standing really deep then that's our smart cut so keep those three cuts in mind because um, I'll be getting you to identify cuts as we go through the session so commitment cut shoulder cut and smart cut so our three types cool so we have uh, a cutting sequence here from uh, a Bears 2 game um, and we've kind of got four different cuts that I want you guys to look at. Um, and as we see these cuts, can you either write in the chat or say um, what type of cuts they are? So the first one is from Joe. Um, 
he um we'll see that the next one's from paddy then scott then nathan but we'll see them happening so there should be four different cuts that we're looking for um cool so this first cut wasn't in my ones there's a cut coming up um because you can't really see what they're doing so the next one's from joe what does joe do there uh, what type of cut is that then we've got paddy over here what type of cut is this then we've got scott what type of cut is that and then we've got Nathan here. Um, what type of cut is that? So if we'll go back to the start and we'll watch it again and see if you can identify what the type of cuts that are, they are doing. Um, and if you put like, so the first one's Joe. If you put Joe and then what kind of type of cut you think it is. So is it commitment cut? Is it shoulder cut or is it smart cut? So Joe's there, and then Paddy's the next one, and then our final one, uh, and then Scott, and then our final one is Nathan. So, yeah, our first one. Um, Ed, Ed is very correct. Um, our first one is Jojo's a commitment cut. Um, so, ooh, coming into it now, we see Joe is now running deep and he turns and he commits and he comes under. Cool. Uh, anybody know what Paddy is? Our second one. So if we just look a bit more slowly at this one. Type what you think it is. Doesn't matter if you're wrong. <laughs> Paddy's look like a shoulder cut indeed. So Paddy cuts into the person, kind of moves his body a little bit so that he can get free. So that's a great example of, of a shoulder cut. And then Scott, um, what do you think? What do you think Scott's one is? <laughs> Not particularly uh, for that. So, Scott's this dude here. Yeah, Scott is definitely a commitment cut. This is a, a very, very committee, committee cut, commitment cut. So Scott runs deep and then he turns and he comes under. And he has a plan and he does it. And then our final one is Nathan. Does anybody know what Nathan's is? If we go back a little bit. Does no one have any idea? Cool, so I think um, Nathan's cut is kind of a mixture of a commitment cut and a smart cut because he uses his defender's hips really well when he cuts. So he goes deep, he sees that his defender is looking right deep and he cuts into the person's hips, turns and comes under. So kind of a mixture of both of them. But that's kind of a, a sum of our three cuts and how we see them in our games. Um, cool. So for these clips, um, I'm gonna write up two different things and um, it will either be a under or a deep or, uh, or like two things which are similar to that. So under means they're coming towards the disc and deep means they're going away the, from the disc into the end zone. Um, so for this next clip, the two different options that the person can do is an under and a deep. Um, we're going to watch the, the clip and then once we get to the decision point, if you react to the the thing in the chat as to which one you think the person should be doing. Um, so uh, here's our point. We have um, Henry, who is the defender, and then Henry's uh, Mark, 
who is um, this dude here. Um, what do people think that Henry's uh, the person, the Cambridge player, um, should do? Should Henry's player go under or should Henry's player go deep? Nice. Yeah. So Henry's player should go under. Does anybody know why they should go under? Because Henry is deep of him. Yeah. This is just using um, the type of um, cut. Can anybody tell me what type of cut this would be? Smart. Yeah. <laughs> it's a smart cut. <laughs> because Henry is deep of him, so the Cambridge defender can just use that fact and just run under and get free. Um, and so it's a smart cut. So if we go back a little bit. Yeah comes under and gets a disc. Cool. Uh, next one, um, we have a cut here, which is, um, our two options again are under and deep um, for this clip and we just get to the point. Cool. So um, the person who's cutting this time is Sasha. So this person at our back of stack. Um, what should Sasha do? Should she go deep or should she come under? React to the thing that you think it should be. Cool, we've got everybody going for under, nice. Um, so yeah, because at the moment, all of the Cambridge defenders are deep, um, so up the pitch from here. Um, for Sasha to go deep, she would be just running into lots of other players. So actually coming under um, where there isn't any defenders is a really good idea. This is what Shasta does, she comes under, gets a disc, and it all goes well. Cool. Our next one again is under and deep. This one's a, a little bit trickier, um, maybe. Um, so for this one, really pay attention to um, the defender here, which is um, one of the Warwick players. Um, Cool. So our decision point here is going to be um, at this point. So we've had one of the Cambridge players come under and he gets a disc. We can't quite see him. Um, but we have number, uh, I think it's 90 here, who is the offensive player who has to make the decision of whether he should go under or deep. And we have um, uh, Adam um, here who is our defensive player. Does anybody have any idea which one um, uh, the Cambridge player should do? So we have lots of votes for under. Does anybody have any idea why they should go under? Sid looks to be in the way of a deep. Yeah, there is two people deep, that is true. Uh, they're not particularly deep. Um, so this is actually, um, uh, he goes deep instead. Um, but the reason why he goes deep um, is because um, Sid is looking under um, and um, maybe could have gone in the way. Um, but um, Adam is actually looking at the disc. Um, so he can't see what his defender's doing at the moment. If his defender comes, if his offensive player, sorry, comes under, then um, Adam will still be really aware of him. But the offensive player uses the opportunity that Adam is looking um, at the disc to go deep. 
So if we go back a little bit, and we can see this happen in real time. So Adam checks the disc, and his player goes deep, and gets it. So this is probably an uh, a situation where the person could have done either. Um, but he uses the fact that Adam checks the disc at this second here. So you see he's looking at the disc, which is here, and his player goes deep. Um, so yeah, Ed's correct. Either is possible. Um, but in this situation, the player uses the fact that Adam looks under and goes deep. Can anybody tell me the type of cut this would be? Is it a commitment cut? Is it a shoulder cut? Or is it a smart cut? Smartly commitment. Um, so yeah, it's mainly a, a smart cut, just because we don't have a, a big change of direction. Um, they're just basically just running straight deep using the fact that Adam wasn't totally on the ball of what, what the, the Cambridge player was doing. Um, cool. Uh, it's also a very good throw as well, which helps. But there's quite a lot of separation here. Um, wasn't quite a score though, which was sad. Cool. So our next one, um, we have two different slightly different options. So we can either the person go under and then deep or deep then under. So either they can go towards the disc and then towards the end zone they're trying to score in or they can go towards the where they're trying to score in and then come towards the disc. So those are our two options um, and we are going to look at um, so this is, for anybody watching, it's 3.51 is decision point. So, oh, that's a bit too early. Yeah. Cool. I mean, there was a slight hint there. But um, what do you think number 25 should do? Um, should he go deep, then under, or under, then deep? And why should he do this? Um, Harry is the person, so this dude is the person marking. Deep then under. Does anybody know why that he should go deep and under? Yeah, correct. So yeah, uh, there's not very much space under because there's lots of people in the way. Ooh, dear. Um, and um, yeah, Tom is also blocking, which is true. Tom's in the way here. Um, and yeah, so uh, one of our rules in Frisbee that if um, if you're an offensive player, so if you're number 25 and you run through lots of people and your defender can't stay with you, um, they can call what's called a pick, um, which means that play stops, everybody stops where they are and they get to catch up to you. Um, so if number 25 went through here um, and Harry, this person, couldn't stay with them because other people in the way. Um, Harry could call a pick um, and it would mean that Harry would just get to catch up again um, and uh, it would mean that the person wouldn't be able to get free. Um, so we kind of, um, we have the rule so that we can't just like run through people um, and then be like, oh yeah, I'm free when it was actually the fact that there was a person who was just in the way um, and the defender couldn't get there. Cool. Um, so yeah, it would call it a, a pick. Um, uh, and Harry is the way of under. Yeah. So if you see Harry is a little bit under of him, and therefore better for him to go deep and then come under. So we'll see that. He goes deep, turns and comes under. Can anybody tell me what type of cut this is? So is it a smart cut? Is it a shoulder cut? Or is it a commitment cut? Commitment, yeah, definitely uh, is. This is a, a very commitment cut. You see, he the start here, he probably thinks, yeah, right, I'm gonna go deep and then I'm gonna come under. And that's what he does. He drives deep, 
turns and comes under to get the disc. Cool, we have another um, one in this. So if we go to 57. Here, here's our next um, decision point. This time it's for, I don't know what number this is, but maybe 17 um, for this person. And um, we have our options are either under or deep. What do you guys think um, this person should do? Should they either come under towards the disc or should they go deep away from the disc? Ooh, we're a bit divided. Two people have said under, five people, three people have said, four people have said under, five people have gone deep. So, um, this is kind of a similar situation to what happened with um, Adam when, uh, or Carver when he was on the mark. Um, but in that situation, um, if we see, we can go back actually. So if we go back to, and then click three, if we go back to 337, so. At 3.37, um, Adam checks the disc, so he looks at the disc and he's not looking, sorry the disc is here, looks at the disc and he's not looking at his defender as much, but Adam is facing under, which is why it's better for the defender to go deep, because it takes a little bit more time for Adam to go deep, for Adam to turn and go deep, um, which is what happens. Adam kind of has to twist his hips, so when we talk about getting your hips. He has to twist his hips to then, which is why he gets beaten deep quite easily here. Um, whereas if we see in this clip, um, Scott has now checked the disc, but his hips are facing deep. So, um, yeah, someone has already gone deep, which is a very good point. There was one person that ran off the screen earlier um, and already went deep. Um, but also, Scott's hips are facing deep, and therefore it's better for this person to come under um, against Scott's hips, basically, um, which is what happens. So he turns, comes under, and gets the disc. So using... Um, checks the disc and in that point he comes under. What kind of cut do you think this would be? Does anybody know? And also does that make sense for everybody who put um, under? It's a bit hard to see in that like freeze frame. Um, but at this point here we have Scott's hips facing deep and he's looking under which means it's easy for this person to kind of change change the, their direction without Scott seeing because he's not looking at him and then come under which is what happens and then Scott has to react off that um, so both have to put smart um, so yeah I would say this is kind of a mixture of different cuts it's a little bit of a shoulder cut um, as Sasha says, just because it's a little, it's a, like a small movement instead of a big movement. Um, but I uh, definitely think it's a smart cut because he's using the person's uh, Scott to come deep. There's another thing which is really clever about um, what this person does. So they slow down their pace and then speed up again. So another way that we can get free is changing how fast or how slow we're running. Um, because they slow down a bit, um, Scott is kind of less worried that they're gonna like go anywhere, slows down and then starts sprinting, which is really clever. Cool. Enough of that, that clip. To the next one. Cool. So this one we have, he baited me into a false sense of safety. He did indeed by slowing down. <laughs> um, then I turned. Yeah. So it was like, next level smart from the Lufra dude. 
Um, in our next clip, we have either that they go straight deep or they come under and then deep. So this one needs a little bit more thought about it because um, uh, this is at 408 for anybody. So we have um, Akash who is on offense. So 42, who's at the back of stack here. And then we have 29, the Cambridge player in the cap who's on defense. Um, we can kind of see here um, that um, there's a big separation between them and this person is standing quite um, under of them. Um, so it wouldn't really make sense for him to just go straight under and then just try and get a disc under, which is why our two options are either straight deep or under then deep. We've got three people who have voted so far. <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> Uh, so we're looking at 42, who's on offense. Um, so this person right to the right hand side of the screen. Um, this person who's on offense. And then this is the, the defender here or the mark, number 29. Hope you can see that. Um, oh, there's been a change of opinion. Five people are now. Five people and one eyes, I don't know what that means, and seven people now say under than deep. The people who put under than deep, why did you put under than deep? Uh, I'm just going to say, um, I think if I just go straight deep here, it's quite a, a big shot. And because there's a bit of a height difference as well, like he needs quite a lot of separation for that to definitely come off. Whereas if he comes under than deep, he can maybe get his... Defender's hips moving and then the deep shot isn't such a big throw. Yeah, yeah, that's most definitely. So it's quite a big, quite a big throw um, if he just runs deep here. So the, the the distance, like you say, the distance from our throw on the right hand, the left hand side of the screen to our cutter on the right hand side of the screen is already quite a long way. Um, so it makes it a little bit more, a little bit trickier if we just go straight deep. Um, Ed has a really good point, is that the defender's hips are facing deep. So even though um, our Cambridge player is under of, of Akash, so towards the disc or in between the disc and him, um, the defender's hips are facing deep. So it's actually really easy for this defender to just react to what Akash does if Akash just goes straight deep um, and maybe even catch up if the throw isn't pinpoint accurate. Um, so if we watch what happens... Oh, that was really laggy. Let me go back a little bit. So instead, Akash pushed towards the player and then goes deep. The throw is not great, um, so it is a turnover. Um, but the cut was good and it wasn't a particularly hard throw. It just wasn't executed very well. So yeah, this is definitely the, the right cut to do. Cool. Um, can anybody tell me the type of cut that is? So we zoom back a bit. Commitment, yeah. So I think it's kind of it's being being smart about it, but definitely a commitment cut in the fact that Akash runs deep, uh, runs under, sorry, makes a 45 degree angle and then goes deep. Cool. Um, slightly smart commitment. Yeah, definitely. Uh, our next clip, what number is this? <laughs> clip number six. So clip number six, we have two options again, which this time is just under and deep. Um, this for anybody watching, um, just downloaded the video is that 4.22 is our, uh, decision point. Ooh. I don't, 
see if I can get it to the right point. Cool. So our decision point up here is a little bit blurry, but I hope you can see it. So we had someone who cut under um, and got the disc. Um, Loughborough on, on offense, so the purple team have the disc. Um, and we have um, our super smart player from before, <laughs> number 18 or something, um, who's the person who's cutting. And we have the defender who is actually just behind him at this moment. Um, I don't think you can, you can't quite see him. But we've had three people put deep. If I can go back a little bit. Cool. You can kind of see um, on the edge of the screen the, the direction of the person's hips. So at the moment, the person's hips are facing deep. Um, but at this moment, he's now changed his hips to face kind of under a little bit more. Um, this is defender. So we've got eight people that have put deep. Um, can anybody tell me why they put deep? Um, there's pretty much under space in the first place, and also because the defender has got his back to the player, the player can just go deep and will be pretty much completely free. Yeah, most definitely. So, uh, yeah, like you said, uh, this space here, because we've just had, this is, we've just had a cut, um, so everybody's not kind of shuffled up enough um, for there to be lots of under space. Um, and... Uh, the person on defense has just committed um, to turning their hips for coming under and has the back to him. Um, he would have to be really quick to defeat his defender under. Yeah, most definitely. He has to go round the person and then come under or towards the disc or so into this space um, for that to be a viable option. So if you look at what happens, yeah, he takes one step and then goes deep. And it's a pretty terrible throw and pretty terrible bad catch. Um, but the cut is very good. Um, just the execution of the throw is not quite there. Um, if you watch for most of the games, Lapra is pretty good at cutting but can't actually throw anything. So, <laughs> um, Cool. Can anybody tell me what type of cut this is? Or what they think it is. Smart. Yeah, so I put this a little bit, yeah, I put exactly that. I put smart with a little bit of a shoulder cut in it. Um, because he kind of does a little bit of a jink there or like moves his shoulders um, to then go deep. So yeah. Nice work. Number seven. Cool. So our options for this are also under and deep. Um, for anybody watching the video at home, this is at um, 4.36. Cool. So this is our decision point. Um, our cutters, or our cutter, is this player here who's in white. So our furthest to the right of the screen player in white. Um, and our defender is, I think it says number four, um, is the, the red player to the furthest right as well. Um, what do people think um, the, the offensive player should do here? Should they either go deep or should they come? under and towards the disc here. Nine for under. Why are people put under? Yeah, the cutter clearing out would be in the way of the deep. So I think this is me who's just getting in the way. Um, this cutter clearing out um, would be, I will probably, I think I run this way. So yeah, definitely will be in the way. The deep space is filled. So yeah, we've got some more people kind of round here. 
the d defender has their back to the under space. Yeah. So most definitely, this defender um, has their hips kind of squarely pointing towards the deep space. Therefore, when this player runs towards them, they're going to be off balance a little bit. Um, so you can shoulder cut, run a shoulder cut them. We'll see what they do. I can't remember if it's a shoulder cut or not. Um, but yeah, we'll have a look. So yeah, everybody's very correct in saying that it's a, a nice undercut. Yeah. So you see what happens there. Um, they don't actually need to do a, sh a shoulder cut. They just run towards the player. Um, they maybe could have done a shoulder cut to put them even more off balance. Um, but what type of cut do they actually do instead of a shoulder cut? Commitment. Yeah, so I put kind of this in between two cuts. I put it commitment cut because they decide to we watch it again. Um, they decide to run deep, change direction, and then come under. Um, and then I put a little bit of a smart cut because um, they definitely saw that um, their players' t hips have turned at this point and then decided to come under um, because that had happened. So, like a mixture of two, using their players, their defenders' like hips to kind of initiate where they were going to go. Uh, don't they don't they start off by kind of faking a shoulder? Let's have a look. Yeah, so there is a little bit of a shoulder cut that happens here um, if we go back. So this initial cut that happens here, they kind of run towards the person's shoulder, so they turn round and then they come under. So it's kind of a mixture of all three. Nice. Uh, clip number eight. So these three clips are from um, a slightly more high level game. Um, they're from um, Brute Squad versus um, Fury, um, which are two high level women's teams um, in the US. Um, this is at the US Open, I think. Maybe not. Um, but our two options for this clip are under, are also under and deep. Um, and the time mark for anybody watching is at 4.49 is where the decision point happens. So this clip is a little bit slowed. Um, just um, to... Um, a little bit slowed just because it was being a bit buggy when I was trying to record it. Um, the players to the far left of our screen are the two ones that we're thinking about. So we have the person on Boston who's in the black shirt on offense and the person in the white shirt um, on defense. Um, what do people think um, this player um, should do? What kind of cut also would be helpful to use in this situation? Can we predict what cut we think they're going to do? <laughs> so we have all of the different types. We've got straight under a shoulder and a commitment. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, there's a lot of things that they could do. Um, the reason why um, doing commitment cut at this point might not be a good idea is because um, we're already this person's already quite deep, so they're already quite a long way up the pitch. This throw from here to here is quite a long way. Um, so for having to make uh, an angle either way, um, one of them isn't going to be free. Um, so the deep option's not really that on in this space. So definitely coming under um, is a good option. Um, because the defender is so close to them, doing a shoulder cut would probably be a good idea. So they can 
move a little bit with their shoulders, get the person off balance, and then have their straight undercut. So we can have a look and see what happens. Um, cool. So it's a little bit of a mixture between a shoulder cut and just fouling the person. Um, because she pushes off from the person a little bit, if you can see that. So you're not particularly allowed to do this. But um, if it was a little bit more shoulder cut, that definitely would have been the perfect type of cut to use in this situation. Um, this is not how you do air rules. Um, women's um, don't play air rules. This is just um, WIFDF rules. So the World Flying Disc Federation rules, which are the rules that we play. Um, but yeah. In this situation where we've got someone who's really tightly marked and uses um, the hips of the other person to their advantage. So it pushes towards them and comes off. Yeah. Um, in the US, they're a little bit more, um, I don't know, more fouls are more acceptable in the US. I think because um, they also play the, with the AUDL, which is um, the men's league. Um, in the US and the men's league they have different rules which means that they can be a little bit more contacty and foully um, because it's meant to be more of a um, not more of a spectator sport but they're trying to make it um, more of like a, a sport which lots of people will watch a lot kind of more like American football or something very high intensity like that um, if they don't call it it's not a foul um, well, yeah, I think in general, the, the, the level of fouliness in this game was kind of even on both sides, which I was why in this situation it wasn't called. There was a few calls in other points. If you want to watch this, I would recommend this game. It's really exciting. Um, yes. Um, so um, I was kind of told you what type of cut it is. So it's kind of a shoulder cut. Um, it would be even better if it was a, a more of a shoulder cut instead of a little push off. Um, but yeah, a shoulder cut and it was definitely an undercut. Uh, next clip, um, we have an option of an under, and um, we have an option of a deep. And for anybody watching at home, um, our decision point is at 5.06. Um, so for the next clip, there has, we'll get to the, start of the clip. Cool. For this clip there has been um, a turnover so um, not everybody's kind of in the right spaces which is why it looks quite messy um, but we'll take a look. Um, cool. So um, the person who we want to think about is number seven here, who's OP, um, and her defender is this player here, um, who's number nine, I think. Um, so this is kind of our decision point. Um, it's a little bit earlier than this. Um, about here's our decision point for number seven. Um, she's really quite free. Her players not very close to her um but what do you guys do you think um this player could do there's i don't think there's a correct um answer to this one i think they could do either um but i think one thing to note maybe is the position of the disc so the disc has just been swung um under and has gone quite a long way down the pitch um so is here So we've got seven votes for uh, under and three votes for deep. Um, can anybody um, put any reasons why they either chose deep or under? Uh, I think if the person comes under, the defender's going to have to turn their hips at some point, and then hopefully at that point they turn their hips, you could like change direction to the other way. Not going deep, but like more laterally. 
So if they came under towards the centre of the pitch, then as soon as the defender turns their hips towards them, they can then come back and come towards the side of the pitch. Yeah. Yeah, so that's definitely an option because um, they've got quite a lot of separation here, so they can, can kind of do what they want. And like you say, if they come under, um, they would have to put this person on their back foot um, because at this point, this person is sprinting to try and catch up with them. Um, we have some other points. Um, Redford says it's too messy for, for a good deep shot. Um, so yeah, there's lots of stuff going on um, and quite a lot of people in this space here. Um, so yeah, a little bit messy for a deep shot. There's so much space under, it feels like a, a waste to go deep to me. Yeah, Ed's definitely correct. There's quite a lot of space here where this big Discraft logo is. Um, we've got these two people who are already running deep um, and this big space um, isn't really being filled by anybody. So it definitely can be used. Um, yeah, and like Sasha says, there's space towards the sideline. So where the Discraft logo is, lots of space here. Um, cool. Should get one of those for Varsity. Yeah, <laughs> a big Discraft logo. <laughs> um, cool, so if we see what happens. Yeah, so um, she drops a disc, which is unfortunate um, because it was in her hands and it was a good cut. Um, but yeah, she does pretty much exactly what um, Scott was talking about, where she came towards the person and then kind of changed direction again um, to use this big space on the sideline. So it was a, kind of a mixture of what everybody was saying, which is fantastic. Um, so yeah, she comes under, kind of slows down a bit um, to kind of put her defender into a little bit of um, security that she wasn't going to move. Um, and then she moves again, turns direction and sprints, and then comes towards the disc, um, but unfortunately drops it. Cool. Um, can anybody tell me what type of cut they think that was? Um, if we just go and watch through it again. So our player is here. Anybody know what type of cut? So either a shoulder cut, a commitment cut, or a smart cut. She basically just tried, tried ran past her time defender, so smart. Yeah, most definitely. Um, using, uh, it's really important to, to note that she's basically just using the fact that her defender has run, we see her defender now, her defender has run pretty much from the opposite end zone all the way down the pitch to try and catch up with with her. Um, and which is why you need to be, when you're playing, you need to be really um, aware of what you're doing, but also what your defender might be doing as well. Um, so you can use their kind of tiredness or stuff they've been doing to your advantage. Um, a way that we can use this is, if people have been running down to the pool, so the first throw that we do in the game, which is the long one to the other end zone, um, the defense then runs down to the other end, the other end zone to then put um, kind of mark up on the other people. Um, and some of the time the defense can run a little bit too fast and you can take advantage of that because they've had to run, say they started on this line to the right of my screen um, and our offense was down here. Um, they would have to run all the way down the pitch to this end zone um, and maybe the um, offense could take advantage of this and then just take off deep um, and whoever was defending them would have had to run all the way to this end zone and all the way back um, which could have made them really tired. So um, our final clip um, we have three options for this. We either have them clear clear out, so get out of the way. Um, they cut um, to the front corner or they cut to the pitch centre. So this is in the end zone, this next clip. Um, and our three options are they either clear out, they cut to the front corner or they cut to the pitch centre. 
um, but just <laughs> don't vote before you've seen the clip. That's not the way it works. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> at, at the time that we're doing this at is at five twenty. Um, cool. So this is our decision point at five twenty for anybody watching at home. Um, this person has just, um, this is Cami, she's just made a cut, um, um, kind of jinking about, so we see what she does here. Um, she kind of runs, jinks about, and then we have the decision point. What do you think should happen now? Should she clear out the way? Um, should she cut to the front corner or should she um, cut to the pinch center. So should she either clear out the way, so into the back here and wait for other people to do stuff? Should she cut to the front corner here, so kind of where this orange cone is, orange marker thing is on the left hand side of the screen? Or should she come and cut to this pitch center, so um, where like the ultimate sign is? Um, if you write down any reason why you think one thing is better than the other one as well. Remember to look at where the disc is, um, what the defender's doing, and where the rest of the people on the pitch are. So we have some, um, so we have some um, things people are saying. So um, yeah, Scott is definitely correct that it depends if the dump pass happens. Um, but looking at how free number twenty nine on the left hand side of the screen is, um, this dump pass is probably going to happen. Um, so if we assume that the dump pass will happen, um, her teammates, Sasha says her teammates are going to the centre pitch, so they would get in each other's way. Um, so yeah, maybe this teammate is going to send to the pitch so it would get in her way. Um, there's also quite a lot of people around here which would maybe also get in her way. Um, if the dump pass happens, Scott says the front front corner is on. Um, yeah, she can get poached off in the centre, clearing out stops flow here as she's back a stat, so it's front corner. Yeah. That's some good points. I don't think cutting to the front corner is a good option as it blocks cuts there from other members of the stack. Yeah, Ed makes a good point as well in the fact that she's been cutting for quite a long time um, and maybe it's a good um, opportunity for her to clear out and let someone else cut. Um, one thing to note um, is the fact that um, if this dump pass goes, like Scott says, we have just reset the stall count um, so normally the reason why we clear out is because um, the stool count will be getting quite high and we want to give someone else an opportunity to get free. Um, but because this pass here will go and our stool count, so our um, time limit that we have on the disc, which is 10 seconds, will go back down to zero when this person gets it. Um, but actually clearing out isn't isn't number one priority in this situation. She doesn't really have to. She could do if she kind of feels tired or if she thinks that her next cut won't be on, um, but she doesn't have to clear out because um, she doesn't really need to clear out. Um, front corner would be so crowded, pitch center, her dump could easily push off so cut, to cut quickly to the pitch center for the swing. Um, yeah, another option to cut to the pitch center for the swing. Um, we do have quite a lot of people in the way here um, though. Um, the thrower is not looking up pitch at all. Yeah, this thrower isn't looking up pitch. Um, but if this dump goes, then maybe it's an option. Um, under to eat deep looks okay to be honest, but OB's not the option, so I must be missing something. <laughs> she already drank and it doesn't look like it's worked, so she needs to let the back stat make the next cut. Um, yeah, there's lots of really good points on here. Um, definitely, um, there's lots of different options to happen in this 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 place. So, um, 
take that in mind from the whole session that we've we've had um like doing one thing compared to another thing um like in different situations it can work for people um or if you're better at doing one thing so if you're really good at shoulder cutting and you can use that to your advantage maybe you can shoulder cut a little bit more than doing commitment cuts um or if you are in a situation where doing a big commitment cut is a really good idea um and you kind of see that your defender um i don't know you've you kind of you keep on getting your defender in those cuts then that can also be a good idea um is this guy gonna be on the exam? <laughs> so we shall actually watch watch what happens now. So in this situation, um, I personally would think that either she clears out or she cuts the front corner. Um, and the reason why I think cutting to the front corner could be a good idea, um, which spoilers is maybe the thing that she does, um, is because if you look at her defender, um, the whole of her defender's body weight is pushing off her left leg. Um, so she's actually her like. She's so out of balance at this point um, that if this person runs up to here, um, she's going to be really, really free. So even if this doesn't go um, and um, she doesn't get the disc at this point, um, she still could be free um, if the person wants to throw it. And then she could clear out because we've just reset the disc. Um, so, yeah, what happens is she cuts to the front corner. Um, so we roll it back and watch it again. So she gets cut out, but then use the fact that her defender is completely um, kind of off balance um, to then cut again. But yeah, I think there was lots of viable options um, for things for her to do. Um, I think maybe cutting to this, um, if we go back. Her defender also tried to check the disc, yeah. Um, so what we call checking the disc is um, when her defender, if we look, her defender looks towards the disc, which is like, you check to see where the disc is, basically. Um, and that can mean that you can get free. Um, cool. Uh, hmm. um, yeah, one of the reasons why maybe uh, I think cutting under or towards, instead of clearing out, would have been uh, not as good an option in this situation, just because there's now three um three defenders in this space um which means that even if she could have got free from her defender coming under here um she might be covered by somebody else um which would make it a little bit more tricky um cool that was our last clip um i hope that was slightly more interesting than just having me talk at you um and uh, you kind of learn something. So to recap, our three cuts are our smart cut. So using what your defender has given you, um, our commitment cut, making a nice 45 degree angle and coming going either deep, so away from the disc towards the, the end zone you're trying to score in and under or towards the disc or going under and then deep. Um, and our final type of cut is a shoulder cut. So uh, a little movement towards your defender to put them off balance so you can go the other direction. Um, but yeah, that was fantastic work, everybody. I thought that everybody really um, uh, got what they were, um, <laughs> got most of the, the things correct um, and all had some really good points, even if you put something different, which I think is good because I don't think there's any specifically correct answer um, in some of the situations. A few of them, it's kind of if the first situation we looked at where um, Sasha, her defender, was very deep of her. It makes a lot more sense to go under than it does go deep. Um, cool. Now we are going to try and see 